Hi there, welcome back. So we are moving to the last tutorial. So here we're going to start to work with SRS simulation or scale resolving simulation. Okay, remember these are simulations where we aim at resolving the scales space and time. So they are inherently they are on a steady simulations, okay? And they are very time consuming, they are very expensive, but just due to the fact they are on a steady. But all the theory that we have seen so far, everything applies, okay? It's exactly the same. We have that uh, that good uh, theoretical <clears throat> background, so we will be able to address this, this, this kind of simulations, okay? So now that we have that time dimension, it's very important to do things efficiently, okay? Not to waste a lot of time. It use good initialization. It's also very important in this kind of simulations. We need to use low dissipative numerical methods. Okay, so stuff that we should keep away of using a win for solving solving some quantities. Also, we we should use good meshes and we should follow good standard practices. Okay, so before presenting the cases, I would like to introduce you to the steps how to run this these simulations. Okay. So this is one case that we're going to, to run is a cylinder, a square cylinder. Okay, similar to, to, to the to the cylinder case that we, we ran that we have all the von Karman straight here and also we have seen some figures about this, some animations. Okay, so we're going to run this case. But when running SRA simulations, your first step will be the running a run simulation. Okay, when you run these run simulations, you are going to extract knowledge from these simulations. Usually you run in a coarse mesh, you start to understand the physics, the wake, is you have a strong steadiness, what kind of corrections will you, you need to use to move to the next step? Okay. So see that here we run the, the case, we, we got this this <clears throat> we, we got these outcomes and see that here we're evaluating integral lens scales, grid refinement ratio. Okay, these are the precursor simulations. At this step I I will do another refinement just to get something that it will be good, it will be amenable for a less or DNS simulation, okay? Something that it will reduce the numerical dissipation, okay? So run in this case, okay? Get all the knowledge, generate interpolation fields, okay? That is, you, 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 you get the solution and you can interpolate it here to another mesh, okay? Do all that stuff here that is inexpensive. So after you get the runs, solution, you move to the overrun solution, okay? So see that the behavior is very different, okay? So here we have some steady behavior. Now see here that we have the von Karman street, okay? Behind the cylinder. So now in this case, we're running on our runs. We have the time dimension, okay? We need to set up the times so the CFL and we do it here in this step that is inexpensive overruns, okay? We do it here to test different combinations, time step, what is happening, but also to generate good initial conditions before moving to the other step would be the less or DNS or whatever uh, scale resolving approach that you would like to take. So see here that we're running the, the simulation, we have the front camera in the street, and see that the integral length scale, the information that we get is very different from the previous one. No, now that you have on steadiness, this tends to be, uh, to, to to your the tendency will be to get lower value. So previously see that we have a mesh that basically was telling that it, this was good, okay? It was like 10 in the grid refinement rate. You see that now it's something about five, okay? It's marginal, it will be better to reduce, but it seems that this mesh is there, okay? It's borderline, this mesh. But see that you are starting to extract all this knowledge from here, you get an idea, the lift coefficient, frequencies, Again, your time step, okay? And what is nice about Urans that in Urans you can run with very large CFL numbers, okay? So you can do a simulation with a CFL number of 20, 40 and get fast outcomes, okay? So it start to, to unset this on the steadiness and then, okay, you can keep running and keep reducing to see the influence, okay? So this is why we run in this case because they are not very, they are, they are not as expensive as, as when we move to, to less. Okay. So at this point, we have an idea of your, of your CFL number, your time Also, we have improved the mesh. And what is important that we obtain it a good initial condition that we can use to initialize the delay simulation. So it's also important that we can perturb this, this initial condition. Okay. So if we have a smooth, field, but also we can add kind of a perturbation, okay? And then we have a perturb 
uh, field that we can use to initialize. Okay, pretty much will be the same, but sometimes it, it is desirable to do that, especially as you are doing the channels and stuff like that. So now that we have this solution, okay, we generated our interpolation field, we generated a much better mesh. Okay, remember these are precursor simulations. We move to the less and look at what we have in the less, a completely different solution. Okay, so see that our velocity fields, Q criterion, everything is completely different to what we have seen previously. Okay. So this is why we want to do this, these precursor simulations, okay? Getting the solution because this can be very, very uh, time consuming, okay? So imagine that in this case, we started from this solution, okay? We have the onset very fast and see that we're capturing here, we're resolving all our <clears throat> coherent structures. And again, uh, we need to assess here now also the goodness of the mesh for the less simulation. So remember that this criterion, that the criteria that we have seen here, integral less scale and grid refinement ratio, we, we don't see this information in less because to compute this one, you need uh, two equation models. Less, you don't have those additional equations. So there are additional criteria, uh, criteria to do that. For instance, here I'm showing you the pole criterion. Okay, so in the slides you have that. So this pole criterion is normalized between zero and one. The closer you are the one, Okay, the closer you are to the DNS. And usually here you should aim for a 0 0.8. And see that in the wake is kind of there, we're there. Okay, it, maybe we will need to, to, to refine a little bit more, but see that by starting using this precursor simulation, we generated a good mesh, okay? And now we're not wasting time here. Just running something is useless and then you need to redo it, okay? So we have a rather good mesh. Then also we can plot the resolved kinetic energy, okay? The, we have this information that you can compute it for, from your instantaneous field. Remember that in less equation, there is the model part and that is some model, it's very difficult to estimate that, that part. So sometimes I like to use models that compute K. Uh, the kinetic energy, one equation model, but it's up to you, okay? But sometimes getting getting the model part is quite tricky, okay? So the pole po criterion is a good indication to know the percentage, okay, that you are resolving of your simulation, okay? As I mentioned, you should aim for 0 0.8. There are some other criteria, uh, criteria uh, around, it's up to you to pick up one, but this one, it works well. So then also remember, it's not about these colors. You need to do a lot of signal processing, when it comes to this kind of simulation less than DNA. So this is a classical plot, okay? And we have seen this at the beginning of the lectures, this Kolmogorov, uh, this low here that we have, and this is spectrum following you know, this constant energy transfer and then the dissipation. So basically to do this plus what you do is that you put many probes in the wake or where you're expecting to have those coherent structures. And then here you gather the information can be velocity fluctuation, pressure fluctuation, whatever. Usually we use here, uh, <clears> total <throat> kinetic energy can be the three components of velocity or just one, okay? It's like when we talk about one dimensional or three dimensional uh, profile, it's up to you. Even you can use pre pressure, all that information, those fluctuations are carry, carry, uh, carry out in the same way. So see that you gather the information and you put this plot and see that this plot here corresponds, it's a, we recall to the third probe here, and this plot here corresponds also the serve from the last one will be this one. And see that there is a difference in this spectrum. So see that here kind of we're resolving well the turbulence. Okay, there is not too much dissipation. We're following, we know that those experimental results that we know that this slope should follow this minus five star low. And here see that we're dissipating too much. Okay, too much to regulate in energy. And we're far from here and recalling your me the mesh that the mesh is rather quartz here. So the problem here is now is the mesh. Okay, it's too quartz there and it's dissipating too much. Okay, so that might influence your results. Okay, but in this case, let's say that we don't worry because we're far from, from, from the body, but see that clearly here, you see the influence of the mesh. And again, you can also estimate here the cutoff the grid cutoff, you can estimate it here, okay? So here you have wave number, but remember that <clears throat> this is the wave number is equal to the inverse of the grid lens, it's of the scale now. So as you go to this probe, you know the scale here, okay? And you put it here and you will see that the cutoff is usually here, okay? So, somewhere here, okay? You will have the cutoff here, frequency. Okay, when you see that you have the change here in this loop, okay? So the wave number is equal to pi over L. L will be the, the grid filter, okay? 
So you, you can get that one and you can plot it here. Okay, you know L here, and then you can plot this vertical line there. So this is the idea of this post-processing, okay? And this is very important on setting the case you have to be careful to put all these probes, okay? Because if you don't put these probes, you don't have this information. And, it's, and it is an incredible waste of time if you don't do that, okay? Because then you need to keep running the case to gather more statistics, okay? Very important, remember. Okay, it's not getting this color, this stuff. You need to put a lot of probes and compute a lot of statistics in integral quantities. And then we move now another integral quantity. We have CD, CL. Okay, this should be CL here. And we have the signal and see the difference between the less and, and Uran signals. There is a difference, okay? So in the less, we're resolving better, more scales. We're adding less numerical dissipation and see that for from this time series, also we can do some additional uh, post-processing, okay? So see that at, at this point, see that we can compute dominant frequencies from this, okay? And you can see, you can then compute your uh, struggle number or that kind of stuff, okay? So this is how you run scale resolver simulations, okay? So do, it's not only setting boundary conditions, it's also very important setting all these statistics, okay? So before running SR, SRR simulation, remember to follow these steps, it's always, strongly advised to start from precursor simulations, okay? So you don't waste a lot of time you know, doing trial and error, and error, getting good measures, because here, okay, SRS is about resolving the scales using good meshes that usually are large meshes and small time steps and computing a lot of statistics. Okay, so that's all that this was this introduction to these st steps. Then in the next videos, I will just introduce you to, to two cases that uh, you have probably seen in literature, okay, they are very expensive, but we're using quartz machines just to show you, you know, these concepts and setting all these monitors. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and see you next video. Bye.